Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem word break. So we're given an input string and a dictionary of strings called word dict. And we want to return true if and only if S can be broken up into separate strings such that every separate string in S is also found inside of our word dict. And we are allowed to use words from the word dict multiple times. So for example, let's say we're given an input string leet code and we're given a word dictionary of words called leet and code. So obviously in this case, we could split this string right into separate strings leet, right? Break it down in this middle position. And then the, sep the second string would be code, right? So Clearly, this can be broken up into words that are found in the word dictionary, so therefore we are going to return true. Now, what if we took code outside of our word dictionary? Well, then in that case, this portion leet is a word, right? But we have no matching word in our dictionary for the remainder code. So in that case, we would have to return false. And, you know, let's say we had an in input string instead called leet and leet again, right? So two leets in a row, would, would we return true? Yes, because we're allowed to use this word from our word dictionary multiple times, right? Clearly it matches this and it also matches the first portion. Now let's start off with the brute force approach. How would we even structure a brute force solution? Well, there's actually two ways to do it, but one of them happens to be more efficient and I'll tell you why. So one thing we could try for an input string like this one, we could check, okay, the first character, right? Basically the first prefix of this string, L by itself, right? Is this a word that's found in our word dictionary? It's not, right? So let's try maybe the first two characters together are a word, right? That's not it either. We would try the first three, right? Basically, we would try every single portion from the beginning until we found a matching word that does exist in our word dictionary. And we know that we are going to find one like this, right? The first four characters of the string are a word, right? So once we found that, what are we going to do? Clearly, we have a sub problem, right? We found a matching word for this portion, but now we want to know, can we break up the rest of this string with words from our dictionary? So that's kind of how uh, we're going to do it, right? That's what's going to be the sub problem, basically. So instead of starting from the first position in the string, we would start at this position in the string and try to word break it. Now in this approach, what we're gonna basically be doing potentially is from every single starting position, right? We're gonna check every prefix, right? So from the first starting position, we might also get, if you know this happened to be a word, then we would start at this position and then do the same thing for this, right? Every word starting here. So basically we're gonna try every word. How many different words are we gonna end up trying? We're gonna try, let's say N is the size of our string N, and we're gonna try basically from every single starting position to the end. So that's going to basically be n times n. Now, we could also do it a different way. Instead of trying every single possible you know, prefix, let's just check every word in our word dictionary and see if that matches. For example, this first word is four characters long, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to check the first four characters in our string. Does this match this word? Clearly it does, right? So what does that tell us? That tells us now you know we have the same sub problem as before we're going to start from these this next position now right and check and from here we're basically going to be doing the same thing right so we're going to check is leet basically you know the first four characters does that match leet this does not match leet right so now let's check the next word in our word dictionary and check does that match uh, the the characters over here it does right we found code so this is basically another way to do this problem instead of checking every single possible prefix right of any length what we're going to be doing is we're going to be checking every single word in our word dictionary as the prefix so instead of being o of n times n we're going to be doing o of n because to potentially we are going to be going through every single starting position but we're going to be multiplying by the number of words in our word dictionary which is let's call it m and the reason why we're going to be doing this approach is because it's going to be a little bit more efficient and the reason is they they tell us below in the problem statement that the max size of word dictionary is going to be smaller than the max size of the string so this is overall probably going to be more efficient 
Now this isn't going to be the overall time complexity. We are actually going to multiply it by another n because when we're checking, for example, you know, this brief, this string, when we're checking, does that match the first four characters here? That's also a n time operation because it could, you know, potentially be the size of the input string s. So this is basically going to be the overall time complexity n squared multiplied by m. So I'm just going to basically show you the same formula that I usually do. I'm going to give you a quick illustration of what the decision tree would look like. Then we're going to understand how we could cache that to eliminate repeated work. And then by understanding that, we're going to go to the optimal dynamic programming solution, the bottom up approach, and then we're going to code that up. Usually the DP solution is a, a lot less code than caching. So we're going to be looking at our input string neat code. So I think that's a little bit better than neat code, wouldn't you say? So what the decision tree is going to be is we're going to start at the first position, right? For example, i equals zero. We're going to be keeping track of whatever index we're at, right? Because we know that if we can find a word, you know, that matches neat, for example, then the sub problem is going to be, you know, finding uh, words that can match the remainder of the string. For example, if we did that, our i instead of starting at index zero would basically be starting at index four, right? So that's gonna what the that's what the sub problem is going to be. So really, we're only gonna have one variable that we're keeping track of in this backtracking solution. And so remember, we mentioned we're not going to be doing it like this. We're not going to check every single prefix. We're going to have decisions in our decision tree based on the number of words that are in the word dictionary. So we're going to have a decision for neat, we're going to have a decision for leet, and we're going to have a decision for code. Now, what we're going to notice is when we try leet on here, right, basically leet is four characters, therefore we're going to check the first four characters of here, compare it, does that match leet? It does not, right? We're just one character off, that first one. So basically, that means we're not going to continue down this path. Now let's try code. Does code match the first four characters? Definitely not. So we're not even going to continue down this path either. Of course, neat does match this. So we are going to continue down here. We're going to do three more decisions, basically one for every single word in our word dictionary. Now, one thing though, is when we are starting here, we know we match the first four characters. So by this point, we are now going to be at I equals four, meaning we're going to be looking at this part of the string. So as we can see, checking neat, that's four characters long. So let's check four characters starting from here. That's not matching, of course. So then we're not going to continue here. Leet, does that match over here? Nope, we're not going to continue down this path. Code, does code match this portion? Yes, it exactly matches. So therefore, we are going to update our I pointer again. Since we matched four more characters, we're just going to take I and add four to it now. So now I is going to be at eight and eight happens to be that exact position right after the end of the string, right? This is where index eight is. Therefore, we basically know that we were able to match the entire string. Therefore, we know we can return true, right? Once we find a single true, that means we just terminate, we end the function, we can just call, we can just return true and the function is done. Now from this example, it might not be super intuitive why we would use a cache, but let's say we had another path in our decision tree that led us to, for example, index i equals five, right? And let's say we had, we used all three decisions in that path, and let's say none of them yielded the correct result, meaning we were not able to word break this string from starting at index five. So then we would return false from this path, right? And we would wanna cache that. We would wanna say that let's say DP of index five, right? We would wanna set that to false. Basically what we're saying is if we ever reached this same function call, if we ever tried it again, maybe, you know, this decision tree could be really big. Maybe there would be another path from, you know, somewhere over here where we tried index I equals five again. In that case, we would wanna return false immediately because we saw from here, there was no possible way to break it down. Therefore, we don't need to redo all of that work if we, you know, try the same exact thing. So we discovered that our base case is going to be DP of eight because eight is the length of the string basically is going to be true, right? If we can ever get to that last index, we're gonna return true. So what we're gonna do is now do the bottom up approach, right? We're gonna go through every single index in reverse order, right? So we would start at the last character, which is position seven, right? And see, can we word break the remainder of this string? 
you know, and we would try every single word, right? Like neat, does neat match this string? Well, they're not even the same size, right? If we tried to match neat on four characters starting from here, we would go out of bounds of this string, right? There's not enough characters. So of course, this is going to be false, right? It wouldn't match neat. It wouldn't match the other two uh, words in our dictionary either. And that's obviously going to be true for DP of six, DP of five, as well. So both of these are also going to be false, right? Basically, if we started from six or if we started from five, we would not be able to match any of the words in our dictionary. But now if we start here, index four, so we're now trying to figure out DP of four. Is that true? Well, yes, it is, right? It doesn't match neat. It doesn't match elite, but it does match code. So we are going to set DP of four equal to true. So now let's keep doing it until we get to the first character. So now we're going to be trying from DP of three, right? So starting from this uh, character, are we going to be able to match any of these? Well, none of these words even start with a T. So of course, we're not going to be able to match. So DP of three is going to be false. What's DP of two going to be? It's also going to be false because if we were to start at this character, this E, would we be able to match any of the words in our word dictionary? Of course, we would not. And what about this position? If we started here, would we be able to match any of the words in our word dictionary? Again, not. So DP of three, DP of two, and DP of one are going to be false, meaning we cannot word break this string if we start at any of these first any of these three positions, basically. Now we're finally at the result that we were looking for, DP of zero. Is DP of zero gonna be true? Well, let's take a look. So we're starting at the first character in the string. Can we match any of the strings? We can't match leet, we can't match code, but neat, it does match this portion of the string starting at index zero. So then the question becomes, we're, we're asking, can we break the entire string starting at index zero? So now since we did match the first four characters, we want to know, were we able to match the remainder of the string, right? So we want to know starting from here, were we able to match this string to words in our word dictionary? Now, this is why we computed this bottom up, right? Because this is index four, right? Notice how we already computed index four over here, right? It's it's the one that's highlighted in green because it was true. We were able to do it. So basically the equation that we would use for this is going to be DP of zero plus the length of the word that we were able to match with. And we know the length of the word, uh, length of the word neat is going to be four. So basically we can replace this length of the word with four. So zero plus four is just DP of four. We know that was true. So we can set DP of zero equal to true. So this is basically uh, the result, right? This is how we're going to compute it. And this is what we're going to assign DP of zero to. And once we've done that, we've computed the result. We know we can return true for the overall function. So with that being said, let's jump into the code. So our cache is going to be, let's say, a one-dimensional array, right? Because for every position I in the string S, we are going to have a uh, value. So we're going to initialize this to false. It's going to be the length of the string S plus one for our base case. And we are going to initialize our base case. We know that it's the last position, basically the, posi the position out of bounds of the string. So the length of S, and we know that's going to be set to true. That's our base case. So now we're going to go through every position I in the length of the string, starting at the last index and working our way to the beginning. So that's why I'm using the decrementer of negative one. And we're going to go up until the beginning of the string. And for each position I, we want to try every single word in our word dictionary and see if the word matches this portion. So first we have to see if starting at position I, the string S even has enough characters for a W to be compared to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to check I plus the length of W and we want to know is it less than or equal to the length of S. If that's the case, then that means there are enough characters in S for us to compare them. So that's what, exactly what we're going to do. We're gonna, if, if this is true, then let's compare. So we want to know if that's true and if S starting at index I, going up until I plus the length of W. So basically, 
let's say W was three characters, then we want to know the first three characters in S starting at index I, are they exactly equal? If they are equal, then we want to know, okay, so DP of I is going to be set to DP of I plus the length of W, right? That was the relationship we got, I plus uh, the length of whatever the word happens to be. Now, if we got a single a way to word break this starting at index i, that means we can basically stop this loop, right? We don't have to look at every single word in the dictionary. If we found at least one way we were able to word break it, then we're going to stop. So basically, if dp of i is true, then we can break out of this for loop and then move on to the next index. So we're going to start basically at the last index, keep going until we've gotten to index zero. And then once we've done that, we know we can actually return that. And that's going to be stored in dp of zero. So believe it or not, that is the entire code, about 10 lines, I think. And this is a pretty efficient solution, as you can see. So I hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot, and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.